am very happy to be talking to you. It has been such a long time since we last chatted about Death Race 2. Oh, my goodness. It was a, it was a long time. It was, it's a lifetime. A lifetime. I know Dion tried to uh, make things happen so you and I could talk for traffic a couple years ago, but you were off shooting something else. You know what I'll do? If, 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 I'll give you an email before I leave. If there's ever a time you want to reach, I, I can make it easy by giving one, an executive email, which is I'd always love to talk to you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Well, I'm thrilled to talk to you about Hollow Point. Oh, a you. vigilante lawyer. Oh, my God. This is a dream come true, Luke. Uh, listen, I, when I read it, I thought it was interesting because obviously the sub-message is, is justice working. I mean, it's a hardcore poke at that. But, um, yeah, I, I, wanted, I like working with Daniel. He's, he's, a, he's a fun guy to work with. And, um, and he promised me that we we're going to try and make something that was a bit uh, different. And, and I think we did it. I think it was a fun, it was a fun movie. You really, you really did go outside the box with this film because so often people look at, they envision you as you're not always the quote unquote good guy in a lot of your roles. I'm not always stereotypically going about it. <laughs> right. But here, and you do a wonderful job. Number one, the script really nails it down in terms of quote unquote a jailhouse lawyer and going in and trying to help. The, the people that really need to be helped. But you pull it off with such oh. intelligence, and then you throw the physicality in on top of it, and the ethical code. Because Hank has a code of ethics. Yes, he does. It's, it's, it's disguised in a, what look, might look like an action movie. But it's, what it was, it was one of those movies that could have been a very heavy, heart-hitting, dramatic piece, which frankly I would have loved to have been in as well. But... This was one of those movies that tried to bring some entertainment within that message, and and I you know I think that Daniel did a good job. It was for me personally, I wanted to find that balance of a man that had recovered from his pain, but not enough for it to not change him. And I think he's in some weird way looking for that exit. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, I didn't want to make it stereotypical because he still had to remain in charge, legal. He knew that he knows that by sticking around, he'll get to do more job. But I, I wanted to put something in there. You know when he says, are you crazy? And he, and he says, the line he replies is, yes, maybe, but someone has to be. Mm -hmm. In writing, it's just a, it's a quick line. But then he realized at that moment, he's like, you know what? I can't guarantee I'm always going to be around because you know what? I think he's looking for a way to be with his family again eventually, but to do as much good on the way there as possible, if that makes sense. So oh. the way you, the gravitas of that within him gave me a reason to keep him very, um, he was hiding, not hiding, he was handling his pain for fuel to stick around before one of those bad guys going to take him out. Yeah, and that really does come across. You really convey this idea that Hank has hope for a future, a bright future. Well, at least for a few other people, I think in, in a weird way, I don't know if it came across, but in a weird way, he, he doesn't know if he will be a part of that celebration, but he'll know he certainly rolled that first snowball, snowball down the hill. Now, listen, they make many wrong things in the movie, in the true sort of actual debate of life, but I do, I did like the fact that he, he didn't seem like, I wanted to play him like someone that, nece that didn't necessarily need to be around for the thank yous. He just wanted to get some stuff done, even if he was painted poorly. I, I, you know, he's made his peace with all of that stuff. The other thing that really stands out here is this is really an ensemble blend between oh between you and Juju and Michael and Delon, um, who comes in. You start with that one on one with Delon, and then he becomes part of this integral ensemble. And I really love the way you all feed off of each other. I think Jay Mo, our villain, is uh, 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 you know uh, Jay. My goodness, I think it's one of the best performances he's ever given. I, I, you're right. <laughs> and I really want to give credit. And also, I think um, Delano, for his, for his introduction, what a great job. Lots of energy. You can see him. A lot of responsibility in this film. Obviously, he produced, he, he created a great vehicle for himself. But my goodness, he, he delivered. I have to say, Michael Parr is the real deal. That, that man yeah. is as tough as he looks. And he, my goodness, is he fun to work with because his acting capabilities are so effortless. That you've, you've got to, and and, and I want to just do a couple of shout-outs while we're there, but Bill, Bill Duke, I mean, 
the composure in which he performs. And I told him on the day, I, I just, I was in a courtroom scene, courtroom scene with him. And um, I just, I don't know, a bunch of girls. And then Kirk Fox, the comedian playing the, uh, the, the pervert in this movie. Mm-hmm. I have to be honest, he did a great job. And it's so funny that in real life, one of the most caring, loving people I think I've met on the film in a long, long time. And everyone's playing it. And then Daniel... Being, Daniel's really being a friend. It was, um, it was, uh, it was a really, really great experience. And, my, and, and, and uh, I don't know, Adele, the producer, is a personal friend, and, and that's it, really. That's the shadow. But just the reason I do that is because film, as you know, is such an ensemble. Mm-hmm. So far beyond what's on camera, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm in love with the romance of what we all go through, really. <laughs> well, you, yeah. you've been doing this so long now, Luke, and you're, you've tackled every genre. You know, even before American audiences really became familiar with you, I mean, come on, you started out doing musicals. Not too many people can say that and say that having made the transitions among all of the genres so seamlessly and so successfully. Oh, um, so generous of you. Thank you. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm one of those people. I, I, I really like to use opportunities, especially as a compliment, firstly, thank you, but to say to everybody out there, we've all got our things that we wonder or that give us the ache in the tummy of our chest and we haven't tried yet, creatively say. And I think what I can ensure and guarantee to most people, if you try, you will do. And I think all I'm doing is once I get to a medium like theatre, great success in the West End of London and then film, has had it. I've had my moments of uh, victories and many moments of not, but truth be told, when we apply ourselves, especially at this time and this pandemic, and mm-hmm. if we apply ourselves creatively, we let our guard down a little bit, you know, we'll be amazed what we can do. So I thank you for the compliment, but I just try my best when I'm in a room. If I'm in a room doing something, I'll do my best to both be a, a kind individual and a hard worker. So that I think that can bring results eventually. So, And I'm a deep thinker, so I think when, when you triangulate effort with thinking, and a good heart. I think. I think all of us can probably. I think anyone could be an actor. I think anyone could be a painter. I think anyone can be a musician. I think it's just a case of, you know, I used to tell people you walk up to that third diving board as a kid, and I'm like, come on, don't be the kid that <laughs> jump. I'll, I'll be at the bottom for you. I'll, I'll catch you. I'll be in the water making sure you're not scared. But jump, jump, jump. You've got to do it because um, you may find yourself in the most glorious position. And I think I've been lucky enough to find myself being able to at least be given the opportunity to try. And, and that's, I have to be thankful for that. Really. You know, I'm curious, Luke, how better, because so many of your roles, this one included uh, in Hollow Point, so much of your performance is not what's said. It's the quiet in between and where you're contemplative, reflective, thoughtful, or plotting and planning in your head what's coming next. How beneficial do you think your stage training and work was to achieving that? Because it's something I've noticed over the decades is that theater trained people, people that have worked extensively in theater, seem to have that little something extra when it comes to those type of things. And I see that here with Hank as well. The quiet times where he's a listener and a thinker. Well, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling very, very thankful for this conversation because sometimes you talk about these roles and people don't see that drama is drama, whether it sits in action or whether it sits in a dramatic Oscar-winning piece. But I thank you for seeing it. But um, I think what helps with it, to be honest with you, are two things, life and the humbling that life brings us and making sure that... I'm one of those people I keep my eyes open with that stuff. I learn from it, I cry through it, and I grow through it. But um, And then... I realized that contemplative replies are what we do, yeah, some of us, hopefully. And when, when I play a role, especially with Hank, it's um, the wheels are turning. He's got the case, as you know, as a, as a lawyer yourself. He's got the minutia of that, the calls he must make, the schedules tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Plus, he's keeping an eye on a young man that does not want, he doesn't want to fight himself in the very jail he keeps people out of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also his wife, his child life, wondering what he's doing while he's doing it. And, and I think if you don't give time, I always tell, I did a comedy once, I won't say what one, but I did a comedy once where the director just wanted me to push through with all dialogue at all times, which goes so against the way I act. I'm like, sir, 
can you not do that in the edit? I mean, can I give you the contemplation and then you can lose it if you need? Now, don't get me wrong, you do have to push forward because, as say, I think TV has a quick pace, film has a slightly slower pace. I think film allows the contemplation of both the speaker and the recipient. I think that's what makes film so wonderfully, wonderfully um, enticing because it shows us the responses that we ourselves feel. But, um, I don't know how to do it, to be honest with you. I don't act, really. I just try to get myself into a place. And if, I'm, if my mind is somewhat confused by it or is contemplated, then <clears throat> that itself does become part of the performance. Because before I, they say action, I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't thought about them anymore. I discard them and, and trust that the moment will pull me through. So, you know, thank you for seeing it. Thank you. And I love that because exactly what you're saying is... Because Dion Taylor and I have been friend, dear friends for many, many, many years. And Dion loved working with you for those very reasons. Oh, well, I didn't know that, but that's lovely, lovely to hear. He, I, I worked with Dion. I played a role. I, I may actually, I made a decision not to do those roles anymore. I played a, um, a sex trafficker. Mm hmm Dion, and I knew that somebody had to because the message was there. Right. But the sacrifice I went through for it. I just know a man or a woman must know their limitations, and I realize that kind of role. I don't mind playing a villainous role if it's within a genre, but I think with my nature now, I, I, I'm not really cut out anymore within my sensitive spirit to play some of those roles anymore. I know that the actors that can still with the energy of 52, I'm just like, look, I don't want to put my body through it because I'm a method actor, and it just denies me of myself a bit and um, too much. So... I, I look for roles now that that don't do that, you know, challenge me and put me through it in pain, but be, but but more in a um, protagonist sort of position. But Dion gave me a role that gave clarity to some of my future steps in in, in film. So I, I, I thank him for that, and I loved not only working with him but the family that he brings with him. Oh, Roxanne and, and everybody, and, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying metaphorically. I mean, I I was hugged by three or four people a day at the same time, <laughs> often. And uh, so be on a lovely man. And, and, I, I, and I'm thankful for his uh, ever-growing success as well. I mean, so much deserved. Things like I saw him putting frames upside down and doing great, very hardcore tracks that had as much feature element as the visuals themselves. And I saw a director since then trying that idea. And I thought, ah, oh, there's nothing like being the inspiration for future work. So congratulations to Dion. Mm. You know, what do you, speaking of, you know, putting your body through things and putting your mind through things, yeah. what is, what kind of roles are you looking for now? Because this one, as Hank, it's very physically demanding as well as emotionally demanding and deliberate. Um, so what, what is it that you do look for with a role now? Oh, I mean, this is a brand new place for me. I've not taken, I turned a role down recently actually, and then another script yesterday came my way. And, I, and, and to be honest with you, it, and I'm being honest, it has to be a collaboration of both creativity, who's bringing, who's bringing that to fruition is very important. Or try, okay, who's gonna try and do that? Who am I gonna be with doing that? Um, both the cinematographer sense and, uh, and, the, and director. Um, re remuneration is a part of it too I can't I need to know that afterwards I can go and recover <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to work again um, I also thankfully I'm a painter now I'm a, I'm a musician I'm doing my own music I've got writing books it's I need to know why I'd be pulling myself away from those things and I think with a role I'd be looking for characters that really need somebody that can understand what we can do with this beautiful craft of acting by releasing the acting by becoming i'm looking for a role looking for roles that both give me the financial freedom to lose myself for the months and months it takes to do it and to recover afterwards and to know why i put my body through it physicality i love doing fights for example the born supremacy movies when they're executed well mm -hmm. oh my god and, and if they are, if they are legitimately, legitimately part of the story, then I, then I would look for if actions in it. I wouldn't look away. Then I'd be like, okay, this is good. This was, this was done at the right time within a story, and it's feasible. And I can do this well because I, you know, with boxing, Krav Maga, Kung Fu, and a few other things, I'm, I, I can throw some shapes. 
So um, if it was in there, it would be fine as long as it felt valid, you know. Mm -hmm. How much tra physical training did you have to do for Hollow Point? Not much. I, 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 the stunt coordinator, stunt coordinator, and I, we put that fight together ourselves. I mean, I would say we both did that together uh, in a day, less than a day. Wow. I got, on, I got on to set, and and often in films, I'll be honest with you, I don't get credited for this at all. Not that I need to. It doesn't really matter. But I, I, I design a lot of the fights that I do because we, the budgets are not there to have days of pre-production. So I'll design those fights on the set sometimes. But because I know. I guess I know I'm not in a boastful sense. I know what I'm doing in, in designing fights. I've, I've worked with some of the best teachers in that regard on screen fighting, like Wesley Snipes, and and, um, and at the beginning of my career, and and also some of the great stunt teams on Hellboy. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sponge with knowledge, so I just look and watch from people that are wonderful at what they do and, and try to learn from it like I'm in a classroom. But, uh, but this one was just a day... One day of uh, choreography, working it through, so when we got onto set, we could fine tune it. And then at that point, I just go into sort of like a zone, and I get, I'm very, I like to do things very quickly in the sense of speed of moves, mm -hmm. because it forces both my body and their body to move in a way of vulnerability at times when instability, I think, in fight is what for me looks good. If it's too stable, I will say to the director, I can't, I can't bear this. I want it to look at times at unstable. So that it feels believable. Yeah, and that that's one of the great things here with Hollow Point is in the different fight sequences that we have. Um, especially, I I, I got to say the Chop Shop. That I mean that that's just that whole sequence in the Chop Shop is fabulous, with the crowbar and the gunfight and the gunplay and all. But you want that little bit of messiness because especially in this film, it's street fighting. It's happening on the streets. You've got criminals, and they're not trained. You could be trained in disciplines, but they're not. So yeah, I, I like that as well. Michael Pye is fighting the bar at the front end when I know he doesn't have to worry about these lads, he, he goes, but he's more of a slugger. You know, he's a slugger, and it's cool. It's not, it's not pretty. It's not. There's no fancy stuff. He just knows a couple of moves. He knows how to use them, and he takes his time, you know, he takes his watch off. He, he knew he was going to handle it. I could, and it was, I liked it. And then my, my one in the library, I, it's like, guys, you might be messing with the wrong dude here. Quickly before we go, um, Luke, I'm curious, what did you learn about yourself with this role of Hank that you can take forward into those future roles that you now give great thought to, to taking? I want to be a better actor. Um, I, there's always, I did a movie after this called Pater and I applied some of that to that film I think I'm always looking for ways to find another valve that can release some of the acting of me so I can become, become, become because I'm a, I'm a very hard critic of being a director as well I look at myself in a way but I think with this it, with this maybe could be too harsh at times but I think I, I'm okay with this movie I think m movies m walking forward I think there's room to, to release myself even further from the consciousness of camera, and I, and so, uh, you know, every movie teaches me something. I, I um, and also the I, I found a few places where he exploded in frustration with, mm -hmm. with Delano. You know about you want to know what we do here. Like he he lost his patience at one point. He understood it, but he suddenly he was letting some steam off. And I enjoyed those moments to have a reason to do that. So I realized in any movie walking forward, stoicism is good. But I want snot and tears and then maybe a little bit of frustration thrown in. <laughs> well, I have to say this is one of one of my favorite roles of yours. Oh, thank you. There's so many different facets that you bring to this character and I just I love watching it. I feel very, very privileged to have your kind words and, and the way you, you played paid attention to this movie for, for all of us. Uh, it's very sweet of you. And, Thank you so, so much. I don't want us to go eight years before we chat again. Well, let's do it very, very, very soon. There might be reasons. I know I'm actually aware of some things that are going on that might be fun to talk about. So uh, we'll... That'd be fabulous. Luke, thank you so much. So much love your way. Please be safe out there. And everyone listening, please, let's, uh, let's love each other as much as we can. It's not an easy time. Mm -hmm.